everybody and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on this BMW 330i, an E91 model with an N52 engine. It was brought in from another shop who tried to diagnose it, tried to fix it, they threw some parts at it. I'm not sure what parts, well I know for sure they changed out the mass airflow sensor, but it didn't fix the car. So in the end they called me and asked me, Dan are you willing to take a look? And of course we will. It came with some paperwork from the other shop and they scanned for trouble codes and it actually has a misfire on cylinder number one, a misfire on cylinder number two, a misfire on cylinder number three and it has a lean code for bank one downstream O2 sensor. This being a six cylinder car, the first three cylinders are bank one and I actually diagnosed this car this afternoon and it has a bad wide band bank one O2 sensor causing a lean condition in the first three cylinders which is causing the misfires basically. Well I know a lot of you guys are having trouble diagnosing a wide band O2 sensor while it's no more difficult really than a narrow band O2 sensor. So I want to take you guys through the steps of diagnosing a wide band O2 sensor and in the meanwhile let's talk about wide band sensors, narrow band sensors, fuel trim and their relation. Now the first sensor I want to talk about is the narrow band O2 sensor. To diagnose this sensor we look at the voltage of the signal wire which runs from 0 to 1 volt. Now when the voltage is high the sensor is reading a rich condition and when the voltage is low the sensor is reading a lean condition. This line in the middle is lambda 1 or a perfect air to fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. Everything on this side is rich and everything on the other side is a lean condition. Now we call it a narrow band O2 sensor because this sensor can only read air to fuel ratios from 11.8 to 1 up until 17.6 to 1. Now when we look at the wide band O2 sensor we don't look for voltage on the signal wire but we look for current being measured in milliamps. Now when there is no current flow there is a perfect air to fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1 or lambda 1. When there is a negative current flow the sensor is detecting a rich condition and when there is a positive current flow the sensor is detecting a lean condition. Now you can measure this with a scope but you can also find this in your scan data. Now another thing you can find in the scan data is the lambda number for the wideband O2 sensor which makes it very easy to see if it's reading lean or rich. Now we call it a wideband O2 sensor because this sensor can read air to fuel ratios from 5 to 1 up until 20 to 1. Now let's take a look at the fuel trims. Fuel trims are measured in a percentage. It can go negative and positive. Now let's imagine our O2 sensor is reading a rich condition. In this case our fuel trim will go negative by taking away fuel and shortening the period the injector is open and it will try to force the mixture back to that perfect lambda 1. Now let's imagine we've got a lean condition. The fuel trim will go positive by adding fuel by opening the injector longer and it will try to force the mixture back to the perfect lambda 1. Now I don't know if the camera is picking this up but the car is running right now and it is stalling and backfiring which is very typical for a lean condition. Now let's take a look at the scan data and let's start with the fuel trims. Let's take a look at the fuel trims long term and short term on bank 2 not a lot going on over there perfectly normal but let's take a look at bank 1 long term and short term going way negative minus 30 you saw that guys now let's take a look at the board 
way negative is over here so that would indicate the O2 sensor is reading a rich condition and the fuel trim is compensating for it. Now the fuel trims on bank 2 were perfectly normal but remember we had misfires on cylinder 1, 2 and 3 which are on bank 1. Now the fuel trims on bank 1 were way negative so the computer thinks there is a rich condition inside those cylinders and trying to compensate for it by taking away fuel. Now also remember we had a lean code for our downstream bank 1 O2 sensor which is a normal narrowband sensor so if we want to check it we should look at the voltage. So let's compare the downstream O2 sensors of bank 1 and bank 2. Now let's take a look at the live voltage of our downstream O2 sensors. These are narrow band O2 sensors so we're looking at the voltage and bank 2 completely normal but look at bank 1 very close to zero so that would indicate a lean condition and let's take a look at our board and on our board close to zero volt means a lean condition now we've got a lean code for our downstream O2 sensor on bank 1 in the scan data we saw that the voltage on the sensor was very very low indicating we've got a lean condition but is the condition really lean or have we got a bad O2 sensor now let's find out by driving the mixture rich by putting some brake link inside the intake manifold and see how the sensor responds Now you guys, what's the voltage of this downstream O2 sensor while I spray some brake clean into the intake and drive the system rich? Now what we're trying to prove here is this sensor being okay by the voltage going up when the system goes rich. So spraying some brake clean into the intake right now. And actually, the engine starts to run better. And watch the voltage of the downstream O2. And we actually drove it rich. We saw the voltage coming up. So this sensor is confirmed it is okay. Now we actually confirmed the downstream O2 sensor of bank 1 working just fine. There is actually a lean condition inside those cylinders. Now if the downstream O2 sensor is seeing it, the upstream wide band O2 sensor should pick it up too. What does it? Let's take a look. Looking at the live data of our upstream bank 1 O2 sensor, this data is always available in your scan tool in generic mode, in OBD mode. The upper number being the lambda number, which is smaller than 1, indicating a rich mixture, which we know is not true. The number in the bottom is the current flowing through the signal wire of our upstream O2 sensor in milliamps. We see this is negative, indicating, as we have learned, a rich mixture, which we know is not true. This sensor is not telling us the truth, guys, and we need to replace it. Now the downstream O2 sensor of bank 1, being a narrow band O2 sensor, showed a very, very low voltage, indicating a lean mixture and we tested it in fact it was a lean mixture the sensor was right but why was the mixture so lean well the upstream wide band O2 sensor was showing us a negative current indicating a rich condition and the fuel trim was responding by going way negative and taking away the excess fuel 
But in fact, the mixture was never rich and it was only driving the mixture more and more lean, causing the engine to stall and to misfire on bank one. Now I'm going to replace this upstream bank one O2 sensor for a brand new one. Now after I did it, let's see what changed on bank one's fuel trim, the downstream O2 sensor voltage and the upstream O2 sensor current. I've got the upstream O2 sensor, our wide band sensor for bank one replaced. Now let's take a look at the scan data. The one on top, a short term fuel trim. The second, a long term fuel trim, all normal. The third, our downstream O2 sensor voltage, no longer lean. The next, the lambda number for the O2 sensor, all normal. And the last, being the current flow of our upstream O2 sensor, switching from positive to negative again. Diagnosing O2 sensors is easy, right? Well, at least now it is. When you're looking at narrowband O2 sensors, just look at the voltage. When the voltage is low, the system is lean. When the voltage is high, the system is rich. When you're looking at wideband O2 sensors, just look at the current flow. When the current flow is negative, the system was rich. When the current flow is positive, the system is lean. If you want to remember this, just think about fuel trims. When the fuel trims are negative, you're taking away fuel because the system was rich. When the current flow is negative, the system is also rich. Now, if the current flow is positive, the system is lean. If your fuel trim is positive, you're adding fuel because the system was lean. Now, if you like this video and if you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel and you will get a notification each time I post a new video. And uh, diagnose then, fix it again. A little bonus material for you guys. I want to prove to you guys you cannot drive this system lean by creating a vacuum leak. Inside this intake manifold of this BMW, there is no vacuum. I'm gonna prove it by removing the MAP sensor. And there is some airflow, but no vacuum. If one of you guys knows why this is, please explain it to the rest in the comment section below. See you next time, guys.